And that's what this story is about. So there's a young man in this village, and uh, you know, they were around that age, that courting age, and um, he had this huge crush on this on the chief's daughter, you know. So he's sitting there and he's he's watching her from a distance, and every time that he goes up and he tries to talk to her, he just can't do it. He starts stuttering. You know, he just doesn't know how to come across. So he's sitting there and he's watching other young men of the same age come up and and talk to her and he's got these feelings and emotions he doesn't know how to express it and he remembered in his stories though that there was the ayabe which is a huge albino buck that lives in the west and he had heard that the ayabe had the love medicine so he said to him so he set out to find this ayabe you know he packed up provisions and he went in the woods he found the biggest set of tracks that he could find and he thought to himself this is it this has got to be the ayabe so he tracked in the woods for days and days without sleep always seeing it out of the corner of his eye, just a flash. And he'd pull back his bow and arrow, and it'd be gone. He'd be walking, tracking, looking, looking. He'd see it, he'd pull back, be gone. Finally, he was exhausted and tired out from this tracking, you know, that he made a fire underneath the huge cedar tree. And as he sat there, he was half awake and half asleep, that in-between place of dreams. Oh, he closed his eyes, and he could hear the night song. And he went to sleep with that sound in his, in his mind. And when he woke up the next day, he woke up to a knocking. And when he looked up into the tree, he had seen that there was a bird perched on a branch up there. And it was knocking holes into the branch. And when that bird flew away, the wind had picked up. And when the wind had come across that branch, it made that noise. And he heard that, and as soon as he heard that noise, he knew immediately that that's what he was seeking. So he stood up, and he looked at that branch, he reached up, and he grabbed it, and he broke it off. And now he's looking at it, and he's trying to wonder how to get it to work. So he's blowing on it nothing. Blowing on it this way. Nothing. He's even going like this, trying to mimic the wind, and still nothing. So what he did then, as we were taught, is he took some tobacco, some asima, and he fed it to the fire with a prayer, and he prayed to the spirit of that bird to help him, help him get that sound. And as he sat there waiting for the, waiting for the answer, he went to sleep. And in his, in his sleep, he had a vision of that bird, the spirit bird, came to him and asked him, you know, what is it that you're seeking? What is it that you're looking for? And he told him his dilemma. He told him about his heart's desire, how he felt, how he heard that noise, how that he wanted to, to give that to her so that he knew how he felt. So the spirit bird listened and then taught him in the dream and agreed to teach him how long to make the flute, where to put all the holes, how to blow in it. And he said, when you do this, he goes, keep your heart's desire here, and you feel it here. And when you blow into the flute, it'll come out and it'll wabi guan. Wabi guan is the Ojibwe word for flower. It'll come out and it'll wabi guan. It'll flower. People will see that in their minds and they'll feel it in their hearts. So he did what the bird had asked him. And after he created the first flute, he came out of the woods in search of his heart's desire. And he stood up on a hill and he could see everybody down in the valley. Everybody, some people were smoking fish, some people were smoking meat, some people were getting berries ready, some people were dancing wild rice, some people were preparing maple sugar. You know, and he put that flute up to his lips and he started to play. took a minute and a moment they all stopped and they all looked toward the source of the sound because nobody had ever heard a sound like that before and they all stood there just listening finally that music made its way to the wigwam of the young woman and as soon as she heard that sound she knew instantly that that was for her so she came out of her wigwam and she looked up on the hill and she could see him sitting up there and she went up there and stood next to him and closed her eyes 
And she was so amazed and overwhelmed that somebody could express so much love without uttering a single word. And as she sat there listening, she realized that the music of the flute was intertwining their spirits together. Oh, wow. 